Hi there. This is a topic video looking at the tax system and in particular an important distinction between progressive and regressive taxes. There's quite a bit to cover so let's make a start. Here's a chart showing the sources of tax revenue for the British government in the financial year 2015-2016. Income tax and VAT are far and away the biggest sources of government revenue. One is a direct tax, one is an indirect tax. National insurance contributions make a significant contribution and so too do things like excise duties and corporation tax on profits and the council tax charged by local authorities. But in this topic video, we're going to think about the impact of tax on the distribution of income in the economy. So, for example, to what extent is income tax progressive in the sense that those people with higher incomes pay a higher percentage of tax? And what of items such as excise duties on cigarettes or alcohol? Do they affect lower income families relatively more? Does the burden of tax fall more heavily on families on lower incomes? We'll look at that in this brief topic, topic video. First of all, we need some definitions, so let's go through them. With a progressive tax, what we say is that the marginal rate of tax goes up as your income increases. So as my, as my income rises each year, for example, I might, I might move on to a higher tax band and the rate of tax on each extra pound might go up. When the marginal rate of tax increases, let's say from 20%, to 40 or perhaps to 45%. This causes the average rate of tax also to go up. Good examples include income tax and we'll come to, come to that in a second. With a proportional tax, what we say is the marginal tax is constant. So therefore effectively the average rate of tax stays pretty much the same. The closest example we probably come to in the UK is national insurance contributions. Although, in fact, uh, lower income earners don't pay national insurance contributions below a certain income threshold and the slightly higher contributions at the top end. But national insurance is pretty close to being a proportional tax. Now, with a regressive tax, the average rate of tax in percentage terms goes down as your income goes up. And that's quite an important point to, to really nail. With a regressive tax, the rate of tax as a percentage goes down for people on higher incomes. And there's quite strong evidence that uh, items such as uh, duties on tobacco and drink are regressive in nature. Let's have a little look, little look at some of the evidence. So this chart, this table, shows the quintile distribution of the population in the UK. So the lowest 20% are the poorest fifth of households in the UK. And then we go to the second and the third and the fourth quintile through to the highest 20%. And those are the richest fifth of households in, in Britain. You can see from this uh, table that income tax in 2014 took just under 12% of the gross income of all households. But there was quite a significant difference for the poorest fifth of households. It took 2.5% of their gross income, whereas for the people at the top end of the income scale, it took nearly 17%. So hopefully you can see from this, everybody, that income tax is fairly progressive. It could be more so if we change the tax rates, but it does have the effect of redistributing income a little bit as we go through the, as we go through the income levels. Now, what about VAT? Don't forget, this is the figures for 2014. And in that year, VAT took just under 7% of the gross income of all households. That was actually pretty constant for the second, third and fourth quintiles, if you can see that. For the richest, 20%, it took 5.5% of their gross income. But look at the poorest quintile they lost 11% of their gross income. So this is evidence to say that VAT overall does have a regressive effect on the income distribution. 
What about the duty on alcohol, beer and spirits? Well, it takes around 1% of the income of all households. Uh, but you can see that the percentage of income of the lowest quintile, the poorest fifth, is more than twice that of the highest. So again, a little bit of evidence there that alcohol taxes tend to be slightly regressive, affecting poorer families more. Tobacco is even more pronounced. Again, just under 1% of gross income for all households, 0.3% for the best, the most well-off 20%, but 2.8% for the lowest quintile and 1.7% for the next quintile. So tobacco taxes are clearly regressive. The evidence is there for you to see. And if we just lump together all of the indirect taxes, and there were many in the UK, we find that they took about 15% of uh, the gross income of all households, but they affected the highest income groups less, just 11% of their income, compared to 28% of the income of the poorest 20%. So I take from this table that income tax is progressive, but that indirect taxes by and large on the whole are regressive. Now, one way finally of showing this again in terms of progressivity and the effect of taxes on income distribution is to think first of all about the inequality in original income. Original income is income from things like wages and salaries from people in work, interest from savings, maybe some dividends if you own shares, perhaps some rental income if you own property. Lump those together, you find original income. And again, on the x-axis, we've spread our population out by quintiles. The first disposable quintile, sorry, the first uh, quintile is uh, the poorest. And uh, then you go through to the fifth, which is the highest, the richest. So, for example, the richest 20% of households had an average original income of just under £1,600 per week. Multiply by 50 to get the annual figure. Now, when we take into account indirect taxes, when we take into account the effect of national insurance and income tax and uh, welfare benefits, we come to disposable income. And I'm just going to adjust the chart to bring the effect of tax and benefits into play. And this is final income after the effects of the tax and benefit system. And we see that overall, the, the tax and benefit system is is mildly progressive because the gap in incomes between the quintiles has narrowed somewhat. It's still quite pronounced, but you see that for the richest two quintiles, their final income is lower than their original income, and for the preceding three quintiles, their final income is, is higher. So our tax and welfare system overall is mildly progressive. But if you disaggregate, if you look underneath the surface, you find some examples of where it's progressive income tax and where it's quite regressive in particular uh, in the case of uh, indirect taxes on, on duties such as alcohol and cigarettes. Quite a bit of data to go through on this topic video. I hope you stayed with it and, and got to the key point that uh, taxation does have quite a significant effect on income inequality. And if you've managed to see the difference between a progressive and a regressive tax, then hopefully this last 10 minutes has been worthwhile. Thanks for logging into this one. See you again soon.